Greetings, ladies and mentalgents, and welcome to this narration of a book, Introduction to Human Biology, taken from Reddit. If you are new to the series, there is a link to the playlist down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Introduction to Biology, Part 2 Jean Francois stood at the front of the hatch, two large round metal dolls that were completely sealed shut. He took in deep breaths, trying to calm himself. He knew the moment was coming. They'd been aboard the spaceship for five months in order to reach this destination. He stared at a literal portal to another world. A few more moments and his life would change forever. Their lives would, he thought, as he looked at his fellow three students. He'd been quite surprised when the school announced an impromptu test and even more so by its contents. He must have scored well because the very next day the faculty had called him to come in in person. He found it odd how there were a dozen black SUVs in the school parking, but ruled it out for some kind of coincidence. His heart sank, however, when he entered the principal's office, and six imposing figures were also present, all carrying weapons at their waist and looking very serious. Oh God, what did I do? he told himself. The principal, a woman in her forties and always dressed in a formal way, got up to greet him. Merci d'être venus répétement, Jean-Francois. One of the men in clad in black coughed slightly, drawing the principal's attention. Ah, yes, you understand English, of course. I need to accommodate our guests. Yes, of course, replied Jean-Francois. They might be in France, but English was at least understood, if not spoken, almost everywhere. Mandarin was a close second, being spoken by more people, but in less countries. Thank you for your comprehension. Now I understand that you have been accepted into Yale, yes. Congratulations. Jean-Francois blushed slightly and tried to wave it off. I have some good and bad news, however. After the results from the new test we administered, an esteemed institution greatly wishes for you to attend. Jean-Francois blinked in disbelief. An esteemed institution. Could it mean? Yes. It could designate only one university. I am honored that they would select me, especially after an odd test like that, but I have already booked a room and bought tickets for September for Yale. This time, it was one of the Secret Service lookalikes that spoke. I'm afraid it isn't optional. We're accompanying you to retrieve some of your belongings, two suitcases maximum, and then we'll escort you to get briefed. His mind spun, trying to understand the situation he was in. Before he could formulate a coherent thought, the two men helped him out of his seat and exited with him. The principal yelled at him before he was whisked away. Bon chance, Jean-Francois. The rest had happened so fast. Alongside three other students his age, they were told about alien life, first contact, and placed on board a spaceship heading for an unknown planet. It was a great honor, they said. The pioneers, the first humans to go live and learn with aliens. He was flattered in a way, but he knew that the reason some president's daughter wasn't heading out was because... This was an unknown. They were in essence guinea pigs. He tried to console himself. He was no longer going to Yale, but the Star Mina Academy. He'd been told it was the most prestigious galactic academy. Think of the space Harvard, he told himself. Crap, that didn't actually help. The trip itself had been rather uneventful, and they'd been plenty busy to not notice the time go by. The crew were a race of felines. The Federation had thought their appearance would help soothe the students since they were in some ways similar to Earth species. The tiger. However, the Noir could use the whiskers in lieu of hands. Nothing quite like spending five months with large predators in a small cramped space to help with morale, Jean-Francois told himself as he struggled to sleep during the first week on board. The moment that they'd all been waiting for finally happened. The two doors letting out a large hiss as they decompressed and rotated to the sides, letting the spaceship crew and four humans dock at Tar Mina Academy. They learned how to roughly communicate with the Enwa using gestures, and the captain beckoned them to follow. Although they could stand upright, the Enwa generally preferred to stay on four legs, which had meant low headroom aboard the spaceship. But to the students' delight, the space station had some 15 feet of clearance. Jean-Francois had thought that it would be for practical engineering reasons, but also considered there could be 12-foot-tall alien species, and he hoped his first guess was the reason. 
Passing along the inhabitants and the crew of the academy, the humans couldn't help but gawk, staring rather impolitely at the varied alien species. One creature looked like someone had crafted a cockroach onto a horse, replacing its head. Shivers flew down his spine, but he tried to keep an open mind. He was a representative of humanity, after all, and would try his best to leave a good impression. The Inwa captain led them to a moderate-sized room where half a dozen aliens of other species waited for them. The captain talked to the others in a language that they couldn't understand before taking his leave, saluting the students on his way out. A tall, lanky alien stepped forward, opening his arms wide. With its green and blue hues, it looked like some deep-sea creature. It looked at a small electronic device it held in its hands, small and only possessing three digits compared to a human hand, before speaking, Well, come. It frowned and resumed pleading, Primary, task, work, program, device, speech. It then repeated something similar, using the same flow, but in a dialect that seemed Asian in origin. Finally, it reached out, tending small four devices to the human standing in front of them. Jean Francois looked at his fellow students, who also were looking at each other for clarification. What do you think, Barry? Jean-Francois was glad in the way that Barry, an American, was here. He could at least communicate with him. On the other side of them, Laura and Izumi, a German and a Japanese student, were also talking amongst each other in Mandarin. Man, fuck did I know, was Barry's response as he scratched his head, but he added more. They probably want us to do something so that we can communicate. Jean-Francois thought the same, but was wondering how to ask for more information. The alien seemed to struggle with human speech. He stepped up, picking up one of the small objects with the alien's hand, and asked the question, How? The alien seemed to search for the right words, a few minutes passing by as the students held and looked at the devices in their hands. Teach device speech. Izumi seemed to catch on, explaining to Laura that which she had learnt. Jean-Francois looked at her, indirectly asking her to share her findings. She took out a small tablet from her bag and utilized the translation app, showing Barry and Jean-Francois when she was done. It read, You need to program the device to understand your language. The device knows their languages. Now we need to tell it our words for their words. Wait. We have to teach the device, and I thought that we were coming here to learn. End of chapter. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.